Well, hello, Paradigm Shifters. Welcome to July. <laughs> yes, the second week in July, and our, our, you know, I love Paradigm Shifters with a definite of purpose and our mission. So we're we're a growing, growing global community, and our purpose is to shift and uplift the entire planet and we do that like by doing that within ourselves you know we're, we're we're global we're all over the world and I'm so grateful for the topic this month on relationships yes and last week we talked about relationship with nature and today we are talking about our relationship with ourselves hmm <laughs> take a deep breath in on that one yeah and let's ask, let's do this. And what I asked, or what we are having a special guest speaker, Sue, Sue Keeper, Suzanne, Sue, is, uh, you know, I've known Suzanne for so long. And one thing I know about you, Suzanne, Sue, Suzanne, I like to call you Sue, is that you're constantly and, and working on yourself and asking yourself these questions and and connecting to that spirit within. So let me tell everybody a little bit about you. You know, you, this this blows me away um, whenever I, I know this about you, but you started training and coaching in 1988. And that's when you became a certified Taekwondo instructor. Whoa. <laughs> Lots of self-knowledge there too, right? Yeah. Yes. Amen, right? And then you became a coach, a life coach in 2003, where you continue to train and coach clients, helping them achieve their goals and their dreams. What a mission. And then you were looking to deepen your understanding and up-level your coaching skills, so you became a certified life mastery consultant, you know? and. This, I love this about you, that you successfully launched three businesses. And your current one is Operation Eureka, where I want to find out more about that too, where you're the CEO, continue to train and coach clients, helping them live this authentic life. But I love this too about you, Sue, that you're so passionate about keeping young adults safe in this ever-changing world, your passion for these young adults. And you enjoy hiking, teaching, self-defense, and going on adventures. Yes. Yes. <laughs> so come on in here, Sue, and it's all yours. Tell us a little bit about you and how you've developed yourself and anything else that comes to mind. And I'll pop in and ask questions if you want, but I'm just going to turn it over to you. I know you're very prepared. Thanks. Um... Well, there's just been so many things in life that um, have caused me to want to get better, to be better, to be better than I was yesterday, and to help others to do the same if they so choose. And um, today we're talking about self. And one of the um, quotes that I remembered was, if I asked you about all the things that you love, how long would it take you to name yourself? And when I saw that one, I like almost fell out of my chair because I realized I wouldn't have named myself at all. You know, there wasn't, there was a time when I just didn't believe I was supposed to care about me, to love myself. And over time, I realized that if that's what I did, I wasn't going to be useful to do anything for anyone else. I couldn't help other people if I didn't love myself. And there's a, um, an ancient quote that tells us to love our neighbor which is wonderful. But the other half of that quote is as yourself. And if I'm not loving myself, I can't love my neighbor. I can't love other people. So over the years, I've learned many different um, things to do, little tricks and tips and whatever to help me to move forward. And one of my favorite ones is um, visualizing myself in the future, seeing where it is that I want to be, who God has made me to be as that future self. And I see her as confident and 
um, proud of the work that she does and that she's compassionate and loving and kind and but all of those are strengths none of those are weaknesses and sometimes we forget in life that the words that we learn have different meanings and if i asked you and i if i asked you what does this mean to you when i say i'm going down to the bank what does that mean you know, and some people might say, well, you're going down to the bank because you got to get money out or you got to put money in. I was actually talking about going down to the bank at the creek, but you didn't know because you didn't have the context. Sometimes we have hidden contexts of the words that we use. And if we don't realize that they're there, they will run our lives behind the scenes and control the things that we do. So in thinking about self, I found that there were quite a few of those little hidden meanings in there. And one of those recently I realized was that I wasn't supposed to be, do better than other people. I wasn't supposed to um, be better than family or friends or whatever. I was supposed to be a support, but never out front, never the leader. And but what I also realized is, is if I'm not leading, then how can anyone else know that they can do better? You know, the people around me, if I'm always following, they don't know what could be better and I don't know what could be better for myself. So things have changed and shifted. And thank you, Judy, for being so helpful over the last few years and helping me to see many of those things and giving me the patience and being able to speak it out, to talk about it, to help me to understand many of those things. And when we think about ourselves, who are we made to be? You know, am I made to be some uh, playing small, um, hide in the background kind of person? Honestly, I've never been that kind of person. And whenever I try to do that, it actually will physically make me sick because that's not who I am. And if I'm cautious about what I'm doing and, and I put myself out there and lovingly and, you know, um, I get free. I get to be me more and more every day. And looking at my notes as we go, um, there's a, um, I thank Richard Boggs for this little story and it's kind of expanded in my heart and he was talking to me about having a golden lasso and we were talking a little bit ago about that future self and who we are becoming that wonderful person that we know that we can be and he said where you are now you take a golden lasso it's a magic lasso and you swing that and you throw it and you lasso that person in front of you that's three four or five years down the road well, she's already there. She knows that she has already gotten there. She's already become that person. She's on to the next to becoming. And she throws a lasso to the next one and to the next one and to the next one. And because there are so many of us lassoed together, when I tug on that lasso, no one pulls back. They can't. Because that last person has reached the summit. They lasso around that big mountain that mountain isn't going to move because it's going to bring us to that mountain so we can climb it. So as we're moving forward, we have the help of future self. We also have the conditioning of past self. Mm. And as we take that past self at whatever age things have linked together in our head to pull us backwards or to make us play small, well, in essence, they're trying to keep us safe because of the way life was when, way back when. But we can acknowledge that, say thank you to that part of us for wanting to keep us safe, wanting to protect us and say, okay, now let's have fun and let's do this and remind them that there's fun ahead and what we're moving towards is going to be fun because we make it fun. We make it what we want to make it. So as we take each of those pieces of us and bring them back together to move forward, we have that whole self again. 
that full self. Sometimes we know what that looks like. Sometimes we, I, sometimes I don't have a clue. I, you know, feel like I'm uh, walking into a dark room when I shut the door and going, okay, what's here? I have to feel my way around. That's okay. Make it a game. What do I find in here? Have you ever put your been to a fair or some kind of a museum in the, or um, like a science museum and they say, put your hand in this box and you're like afraid to put your hand in there. You don't know what you're going to touch. And you're like, ooh, like kind of creepy, you know? But you're putting your hand in there and you find it's this funky rock, different shape or whatever. And it's hard and you feel it and it's rough on your fingers and it's got angles and crags in it and all kinds of things. But it's safe. Are you, do you want a future that's safe? Then that's what you're going to create. You know, have fun. Make life wonderful. There's a... Um, There's a, a, a quote that somebody put out a while ago, and I was hoping to find it, but didn't get a chance to. And this person comes to God and says, God, who are you? And God says, I'm your protector. I'm your keeper. I'm, I love you. I'm, um, I'll answer all your questions. I'm your teacher. I'm your, you know, all of these wonderful things. And the person with tears in their eyes says, who am I? And he says, you are mine. So if we ever have a question of who we are and who this self is, we belong to him always, mm. always, always. Mm. So there are a couple of things that I was thinking of to, to help you guys. Um, if you feel stuck, if you feel you don't know who you are, first one I go to is God. God, who am I today? And then I also ask him, who is he for me today? Who is he going to be for me today? And then I ask him, what things inside of me are keeping me stuck? And then what things in me will allow me to be move forward that need to be set free? And then last and always, to say thank you for helping. So that's what I had to share for today. Oh, gold. I want to ask you about Operation Eureka, because I know I've been working, we've been working together for a while, and it's like, and this whole passion for young people that you have. And, and I would love to have you tell us more about that. And why is that so important to you? Maybe a personal story. Why is it that a passion of yours now, Operation Eureka? And, and where was it that that got triggered? Um, probably when I was in my teens and probably younger at different times. Um, wanting to move forward, wanting to know how. Felt like I was being held back, not knowing what to do. and um, having to break free on my own and having to figure it all out on my own of, okay, I get my first apartment. How do I do this? You know, lived with someone the first time and they're like, okay, we're going to share the phone bill half and half. I'm thinking, okay. But then they decided they wanted to make long distance calls and wanted to split that in half. I'm like, I didn't make those calls. I didn't agree to that. I agreed to that. You know what I mean? So knowing how to just do life you know, and things have been so busy and things have been so cramped lately. I, I've been living alone for a long time. So it's like interesting to have someone around, you know, and having the same people around, having families and things being all stuck together, you know, not being able to get out and grow and, and to, to be having that space. And yeah, I mean, I don't know if that makes sense. Yeah. Um, what is Operation? Um, yeah. What is Operation Eureka? And is it just? I'm just curious. I I know I know what it is, but I really but, really feel that. So I have a series of trainings for young adults as well as adults um, to learn how to step out in life, to learn how to change their life if they want to change their life. Um, make sure you know how to take care of your car your apartment, yourself, um, 
how to learn about yourself so you know what you love to do. So when you get that job, that you're on that path of doing what you love instead of doing what you have to do, just so you can make money to get an apartment. Bam. That also may happen, but you'll be clear on that to know that it's a stepping stone as opposed to being stuck there. But also for adults who've been in a job for 20 years going, do I really want to do this anymore? Did I ever want to do this? To give you the breathing room to say, I want change. How can I do that? What can I do? And to help you find those steps to move forward into a new life, a better life, a freer life, to be you, to be your unique self. So there's modules. So tell me some of the modules. I would love to know. When you said car, yesterday my car broke down. I mean, you know, like, I don't mean broke down, but I was flagged down. This kid, he came by, he just gave me a jump and he said, well, you might want to do this. And I'm like, wow, you're 16 years old. I love this. It, and then, uh, anyway, it just reminded me of, of one of those modules that you keep talking about, about cars and and apartments and checkbooks. So, mm-hmm. yeah. Yes. So there's a whole variety of um, areas for the young adults to learn about learning how to do your finances, learning how to take care of your car, making sure that you know how to check the oil, um, that you can, if you so choose, learn how to replace the light bulbs and the the headlights it's not hard you just got to sometimes have smaller hands um but to know how to take care of yourself um to know how to do your finances that you can take care and budget for an apartment for okay i need to get a car coming up soon so i need to save money for a down payment you know what i mean all kinds of things like that to um understand for me this is the biggest one how you think about things how you think about life and like I was telling you guys earlier about having this thought in my head of I'm not supposed to be better than or I'm not supposed to be really good at anything. Well, if having that thought is there, then where am I ever going to go in life? You know, and to take you through a series of areas and ask you questions to find out what you think. And it's it's a there are no wrong answers. There's no right or wrong to the answers. It's just what do you think? So you can decide if you want to keep that thinking or not. It's up to you, but for you to consciously know what those thinkings are about and um, to have you try different things. Have you ever built a wooden box? You know, so you can learn how to use a hammer and a screwdriver and whatever. So when you're in that first apartment or in, you know, all of a sudden, sometimes you find yourself, oh, I don't have a spouse anymore. What do I do? How do I take care of the finances? How do I put a picture up on the wall in this new apartment? So you know how to do that. You can take care of these things. You can take care of you and not feel completely lost. Um, Yeah, I mean, those are, you know, a handful of the areas that we go through. And um, to just remember that you are wonderful. You're a unique self. You don't have to be anybody else. You don't have to be like anybody else. You don't have to copy anybody else. Just be you. Oh, this is so, this is so rich. I love this. You know, and I just, because I used to work with those young adults and, and well, I then I realized that they knew a lot, a lot more about life than I did, the, the details. So I'm learning all from each other. I also know, if you don't mind, I also know the bigger, bigger picture of it, would you mind talking a little bit about the the big vision? I don't mean big vision, but the the vision the that step. you have for this. Yes, because I, we talk about like these images. This is like the first step in development. Yes. And I love the fact that you're lassoing it and you're pulling it and you're getting closer and closer. So tell, if you don't mind, can you tell us about God's Green Acres? That is my goal my biggest dream to have wide open spaces for people to come and to have that safe place to learn to heal to shift your thinking to grow to have fun and to reconnect with nature with yourself with your families um we get so stuck in the in the outside world sometimes that we forget 
what family is. We forget what our friends are and all of that. And to be able to have a place to grow together like that is amazing. And just think about your family coming to God's Green Acres. And there are 18 different things to do in one day, but you can't do them all. So you and your family all pick different things to do. And you all do something different in the morning and you come together at lunch and you're like, guess what I did? And I did this and I did that. And you all get to do your thing, you know, and you've got people there to help train you if you need it. You have, you know, people there to make sure you're safe. And, but then you go out in the afternoon after lunch and you find something different to do. And you come back again in the afternoon and you share what you've learned and what you've grown on. And it gives you an opportunity to realize who you are, what you really enjoy doing. So you get to try a variety of things that you've never had a chance to before. If you guys make up something new you want to try and it's not there, well, next season we'll have it. <laughs> and so that you get a chance to find what you love, really find what you love to do, enjoy it, expand it, grow it, and bring it back to the world. Oh, I love it. What a beautiful mission. Well, so I want to take a, 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 a time out to have our community put a blessing on you. And what is it that I would love, what, what, what it's up to you, what is it that we can um, vision, I mean, you vision and hold for you. Um, I know um, Operation Eureka is getting off the ground and everything, but what is it, and what is it, what you would love to have us hold for this part of your life to keep unfolding? What would you love? There are some, um, I don't want to call them technical things, but there are some things that need to happen um in the next few weeks to get some the business rolling mm -hmm. and i got the first one done last night and um so things are moving forward that all of this comes together in the next two weeks so that clients are coming in the door and that i can help people and um bring families closer together again okay you ready Ooh. going to virginia Okay. All right. Well, this is extra energy for the entire world and globe and mm, all right. Yes. Here you go, Sue. Wow. Thank you so much. Powerful. Thank you. Powerful. Thank you. What a beautiful role model you are. Thank you. Yes. I'm so grateful for you. I get that from somebody I know. <laughs> That's you too. <laughs> Together we rise. Yes. Yes. We I do. love it. Thank you. And you know, I love mm -hmm. this July is unfolding and unfolding and unfolding. And, you know, it's all relationships. Yeah. 